Arnold and Linda Havenscotch exited the taxi with the slightly disoriented bustle of international travelers. Dressed in khakis, they rolled their luggage along the Panamanian pier towards the awaiting ship. The Victorian ship towered over the pier. Topped with four smokestacks, the ship longer than a football field, painted black and beige with intricate detailing around the exterior. No detail was spared. It's so hot. Did you bring your sunscreen? Linda asked. Yep, Arnold replied dryly. I hope they have some food when we board. I'm starving, Linda groaned. I read in the brochure that they have a welcome buffet, Arnold said. Arnold and Linda approached the gangway. Two men dressed in Victorian suits greeted them. Mr. and Ms. Havenscotch, the one man said in a British accent, we'd been expecting you, which seemed appropriate for something someone would say about a hundred years ago. Arnold held out his phone displaying the boarding passes, and the man scanned them. Head on up. Enjoy your cruise, the man said, as he and the other greeter nodded. The Haven Scotches entered the dining room as the other passengers bumbled excitedly. A Norwegian man shouldered up to Linda in the buffet line. Are you nervous? he asked. Not really, Linda replied casually. This was his idea, Linda said, nodding in the direction of Arnold, who was carefully pronging some roast beef onto his plate. I'm just here for the ride. Linda said. The dining room was floored with marble and chandeliers hung above. Following their meal, the Haven Scotches were escorted to their room along the gilded hallways with beautifully carved wooden railings and moldings throughout. Your room, the bellhop said, motioning his arm gracefully. A friendly reminder that your orientation will begin in 20 minutes. It is absolutely mandatory, he said before exiting. Two wristbands with Arnold and Linda's name sat on their room's dresser and a note to don them immediately. Arnold flopped onto the bed and began flipping through the TV channels as Linda unpacked. Why are you putting your clothes in the drawers? He asked. I want to be comfortable. Just relax, she said. I'm sorry, hun, he replied. I'm glad you came. Me too. It's going to be so much fun, Linda said joyously. Two rows of passengers sat anxiously in the orientation room awaiting the presentation. An officer entered and approached the front of the room with the confidence of a seafarer. Okay, folks, I'm sure you've all done the required research before boarding, but listen up, he said. You've all been given tracking bracelets left in your rooms. These will track your position throughout your journey. Everyone hold up your wrists. The 20 passengers displayed their wristbands. Money. Now, you are all standard passengers, meaning you are not permitted below deck at any time. Should you cross below deck, your wristbands will sound and we will be alerted. You will notice that there are no doors on the ship, so please everyone respect everyone's privacy. We are setting out across the Atlantic, on course for Portugal. The ship will go down at any point along the journey, and your wristband will begin sounding when it does. You will have 15 minutes before the deck sinks below the surface, and your wristband will beep progressively quicker until it reaches that point. In this time, you will head to a lifeboat, or for those of our premium passengers, you will enter the water and swim to a lifeboat. Rescue divers will be waiting to escort you if necessary. Any questions? he asked, while scanning the passengers with focus. Will the ship go down at night? a man asked. I don't sleep with my glasses on. The officer stared blankly at the man for a brief moment. Please all now make your way to deck for lifeboat training, he said, then exited the room. Sunken Dreams, Inc. had operated a handful of sinking expeditions up to this date. They operated exclusively out of Panama, offering the luxury experience to 100 passengers of sinking on a Victorian-era ship. Under the cloak of international waters, it was still undetermined whether the business was legal, but had generated a great amount of business to worldwide elites, often paying 500000 US dollars minimum to board the doomed vessels. Despite the ongoing litigation regarding two lost passengers on their last voyage, Sunken Dreams, Inc. continued to have repeat passengers and quickly sold out the ongoing voyage. Many passengers partake in the voyage for transformative experiences or insights. Silicon Valley CEOs had taken to the journeys, claiming it instilled clarity for the direction of their businesses. Others had voyaged to overcome trauma, others to mend relationships, some to just do drugs and party. Below deck passengers, known as gold members, could request brink-of-life experiences where they would be fully submerged before escaping, almost always requiring life-saving intervention by the rescue divers. On the third day of the voyage, Arnold and Linda were still in bed when the ship made a deep groan like a mythical sea creature making its presence known. The Haven Scotches were snapped out of their grogginess as their wristbands began beeping. 
Ooh, they wanted to hit us when we were drowsy. How exciting, Linda exclaimed. Water had already begun seeping down the hallways, and many passengers had passed the Haven Scotch's doorway on their way to the lifeboats. Arnold remained laying groggy in bed, rolling and making no concerted effort to escape. Do you think we have time to pack our clothes, hun? Linda said. Come on, if you don't hurry, you won't even get your phone out of here. Arnold groaned and finally rose from bed. The ship began tilting dramatically forward. How much time do you think that's been? Linda asked. I didn't think there would be this much water at this point. Oh my god, it's cold, she yelled as she stepped into the hallway. The water was a few inches deep, and they'd have to climb a hallway that now looked like a hill to get to the lifeboats. Arnold sat on the bed and put on his glasses and clothes, and made his way out with Linda. Linda began to panic as she struggled to gain her footing on the slippery carpet of the hallway. Arnold linked arms with her and led the way, inching up the hallway as he pulled them both along by grabbing onto light fixtures or the decorative wooden moldings. It was quiet now. No other passengers were in sight. The wristbands were beeping faster. After minutes of struggle, Arnold and Linda made it to the ballroom and were now close to the lifeboats. Looking back down the hallway, the water was now flowing forcefully in. Oh my god, babe, you saved me, Linda said. Arnold smiled softly. Linda, can I tell you something? He asked. Sure, babe, what's up? But we should probably get going. I don't want to have to swim to a lifeboat. I think we should split up, he said. What, now? But we're almost there, she replied. If you want to milk this some longer, go ahead, but I'm getting on a boat. No, Linda. I mean our relationship. Linda's jaw dropped and her eyebrows raised. She looked at him in shock. There was a long silence as she waited for him to say something or wake her from the dream in which she had heard what he just said. You mean a divorce, she said, and again paused, scanning her immediate surroundings to confirm her reality. Yes, he replied. But what about our kids? Everything, she asked. Wait, you're doing this now? You brought me on this fucking thing to do this? Now? Are you serious? This has to be a joke. This wasn't planned, Linda. It just came to me this morning in bed. We don't have the connection that we used to, and I don't want to waste any more time pretending that we're okay, Arnold said. The ship now began listing to the starboard side, and the water was rising to the Haven Scotch's knees. Waste any more time? Linda asked. We can sort this all out when we get back to land, Arnold said. This can't be fucking real. What the hell is this? Linda said, exasperated. As the Haven Scotches stood in their dilemma, a rescue diver in full scuba gear and flippers came flip-flopping towards them from down the hallway, grumbling behind his oxygen mask and shooing them with the backs of his hands towards the lifeboats. You're fucking sick, Arnold. I hope you sink and die with the fucking barnacles or whatever the fuck. Bye, Linda, he said as she stormed off. Arnold stood still in the empty ballroom until the disgruntled rescue diver approached him and yanked him towards the exit. The Haven Scotches sat opposite each other on the lifeboat, draped in blankets, as a stewardess handed out champagne as the boat bobbed along. Linda was staring into space and looked as if she had not survived, and Arnold looked sick with anxiety. A group of Germans were drunk and slapping each other in exaltation, almost falling from their seats. A cute young couple were huddled and smiling under one blanket. The Norwegian man from the Welcome Buffet was sat next to Linda. He leaned in towards her and asked, How was your trip? Madam, 